Hey everyone, it's Just Jumby here. Today I have for you a structure saving system that allows you to store and read structures off of actual items. So here we have an iron sword, but it isn't any ordinary item. You'll see it has a few NBT tags on it, and on the sword is an actual structure stored. I'll put it in the first slot, and then I'll drop the create structure torch, and after a few seconds we have a Steve statue assembled in front of us. Now this isn't being cloned from anywhere, there's basically about a hundred NBT tags that describe every block of this structure with command blocks reading the data and then placing each individual block. We can also easily switch out structures simply by switching out the items in the first slot. So here I've got an Enderman and I'll switch this out and then I can create a zombie right after. So this is the entire system and it contains about 40,000 of the new chain command blocks which run in a single giant thread which uh, curves back and forth and then up. Now before I dive into the commands I'm going to use a program called NBT Explorer to look at one of the structure items and show how data is stored on it. Now every item in your inventory has certain tags assigned to them that specify certain data such as the stat count, the item ID, and sometimes even name and lore. This can all be specified with in-game give commands. However, you can also add meaningless tags to the item and it will retain it. And these tags can then be detected with command blocks. On the Steve Sword, we have a made up blocks tag, which contains a list of all the different materials needed in the structure. The first number is the numerical ID of the block, the second number is the data value of the block, and the last number is simply an identifier from 0 to 9. So any structure we make can include up to 10 different block types. However, data values do matter here. So, for example, this tag would be cyan wool, which is used in Steve's shirt. We also have a schematic tag, which contains a list of all the spots where each material goes. The first three numbers are XYZ coordinates relative to an invisible armor stand, and the last number is which of the 10 materials is placed there. The entire system uses four main types of commands, with roughly 10,000 of each type. The first two types create this palette of blocks back here. The first command detects the different block types needed for the structure, and sets a temporary scoreboard value. The second command, reading that scoreboard value, will set block the material into one of the 10 slots of the palette. These two commands are repeated for every single data value of every single block in the game for each of the 10 materials. The last two commands create the actual structure. The third command detects if a certain material needs to be placed at a certain coordinate, and sets another temporary scoreboard value. The fourth command, using that value, will then clone the material from its palette spot into the correct coordinate. These last two commands are repeated for every x, y, and z coordinate in the 10 by 10 by 10 area, for each of the 10 materials. To make storing structures on an item very easy, I've written an MC Edit filter. I've designed a structure, and now we'll switch into MC Edit. Here we just select the 10 by 10 by 10 area, and make sure you don't include the floor. Then we'll open the Structure Saver filter, and we can set what the structure will be called and what item it will be stored on. So I've just called it Chunk, and it will be stored on a block of grass. Now make sure the operation is set to Analyze Structure first, and we'll run that. And it won't look like anything has happened, but our give command has been generated. We just need to specify where to put it. So I'll select a block over here and change the operation to create command block. And we'll run it again. And that's all we need to do. Back in Minecraft, I'll get the item. And I'll destroy the original structure first. And now when we drop the torch, we get our chunk structure. If you want to try it out for yourself, there's a world download in the description, and also one for the MC Edit filter. In the world, I've also made some default structures that you can try out. You can also send the generated give command to someone else, and they can run the command in their own version of this world, using the item to create the same structure. The 40,000 commands were also generated with another filter I wrote, and if you're interested in that, it's in the description as well. This may not have many practical applications, however it does show how much data can be stored and read off of a single item, and I have another invention I'll probably be showing pretty soon with another cool use of this. 
But other than that, I will see you next time. Yeah.